Westminster Abbey is the setting for the show of the century as peers arrive for the coronation of King George VI. Did you know much about George VI before you took this role on? No, I think most Brits of my generation are, are not particularly focused on the, the affairs of the royal family unless a big moment comes along. For George VI, who was born Prince Albert or Bertie to his family, that big moment came in 1936. His brother, King Edward VIII, stepped down from the throne to marry a twice-divorced woman, Wallace Simpson. I have found it impossible to carry the heavy burden of responsibility without the help of the woman I love. As Great Britain prepared for war, Albert prepared to reign while fighting a more personal battle. I'm sure that we are all trying to overcome a debilitating stammer. Happy to feel. And you see him running into this problem, it's absolutely heartbreaking. I mean, I choked up watching it. Really? Yeah, it's very moving because it's not just the struggle, it's, it's the courage with which he deals with the struggle. He just does it, he gets on with it. He goes through what the silence, which probably seems like an eternity. That, that the generosity of his majesty. And then something in your heart swells when you see him get beyond it and get another three or four words out before he hits another one. Has set an example to all. The king's wife sought the help of a speech yeah. therapist, Lionel Logue, played by Jeffrey Rush. Now you must come to us. My game, my turf, my rules. You look at Jeffrey Rush's character and you think, that's the guy we all wish we had in our lives to turn to. He won't give up. Please don't do that. I'm sorry. I believe sucking smoke into your lungs will kill you. My physicians say it relaxes the, the throat. Well, they're idiots. And they've all been knighted. Makes it official then. If he reaches a barrier, he will find a stealthy way around it to just try to open this man up. Do you know any jokes? Timing isn't my strong suit. But through his work with Lionel, Jack and Jill went up the hill. Went up the hill. The king slowly finds his inner strength. Tommy did die. At a time when his nation needed him the most. What's he say? I don't know, but. He seems to be saying it rather well. Bertie is fascinated, maybe even a bit envious, of Hitler's uncanny ability to communicate. You know, I think it's significant that he doesn't understand what Hitler is saying. Obviously, he's aware of the menace, but he's tuning in to the brilliance of delivery, thinking, you know, here am I. I can't even get two words out in front of a microphone. When... When... And here's this man who's using it to the most devastating effect on, uh, on, on, a, on a global level. How do I stand a chance? You know, what would it be like to have that ability? Get up, you can't sit there. Get what helped him through was an unlikely friendship that taught King George how to be heard. This is about uh, two very brave men, one who has no idea that he's brave. And the therapist who decides he's going to find every means possible to, to reach that pl damaged place. Listen to me! Listen to you, by what right? Because yes. I have a right to be, yes. and I have a voice! Yes, you do. People knew that this man was facing his demons just by speaking to them. And I think there was a sense that it cost him something. And they found it valiant.